When to turn the lights on and lights off was a tip in my video, virtual learning set up for success. In order to have an effective setup, a conducive learning area is needed. The area should be facing in a direction that is not distracting or at least distracting, especially with what is visibly near and in front of a student's face. In this video, you'll learn strategies to succeed in virtual learning that can be applied to your own child's case. The path to success begins even before school begins. Communicate the virtual learning scene, expectations, as much of the routine as possible, and roles of different people to avoid confusion, disorganization, and disorientation. Because if adults don't do it, the child will have to do so to make sense of it all. It's part of information processing and settling into new routines. My name is Mimi Samsonet, and you're watching One Mom's Perspective on Strategies to Succeed in Virtual Learning. Similar to lights, a change of clothes is another indicator for the mind and body to feel that it's time to wake up. In virtual learning, timing is everything, including the sense of time. This makes it an easy challenge for people who are well organized. Allie knows breakfast is at 8 o'clock. A light breakfast wakes Allie up. Too much food may put her to sleep, so I give her a light breakfast followed by snacks that can easily be portioned so that she is done breakfast by 8.25. Allie knows to go potty at 8.25 so that she can get back in time for her 8.30 a.m. virtual class. If Allie requires a bit more time in the bathroom, I'm at her desk when class starts and she simply joins in. Each class has its own routine and segments. The first 15 minutes of Allie's class is flexible for students to share when they're ready. Allie has hypotonia, a condition of poor muscle control and reflex. Instead of raising her hand, Allie holds the cue stick to signal to her teacher that she's ready to communicate. This is also more visible for the teacher and fun for Allie as the cue stick is like a toy. In the next segment relating to the calendar, Allie is able to participate independently. <laughs> what number is that? Number? Allie is able to participate independently in most segments because of the following. 1. To become familiar with the routine, I must initially participate with her. Stop. <laughs> Good job. Good pointing. 2. Sometimes to motivate herself, Allie first attempts to participate with her favorite stuffed animal until she gains confidence. Better. I, that's right. Letter I. Good pointing, Allie, little M. Good pointing. Three, after Allie knows the routine with confidence, she participates independently. Number one. Four, she continues to participate independently because I would verbally remind and praise her as I listen in. Five, visually the teacher's screen is maximized to narrow Allie's focus on the teacher instead of being distracted by other students. It is most difficult to participate in overwhelming segments. Because Allie severely delayed receptively, the segment relating to stories is the most overwhelming for her. Allie knows that she has two options that help her cope while staying present for the segment. Option one is that Allie can have a sensory toy while looking at the screen. Sensory items address sensory needs, reduce anxiety, and help focus. Option two is that Allie can draw images that relate to the stories. Activities are relevant to her learning. Allie enjoys drawing very much. I would relate her drawings to parts of the stories. Allie knows that like any other segment, story time will be over in 10 minutes or so. As Allie occasionally gets lost in her own thoughts and looks around, this visual standing cue reminds her of what's happening and her attention is redirected back to that it's story time. 
it's become a calming tool because she knows that the card will flip and the class will move on to another segment soon. The clock is another visual in which Allie can feel that time is moving forward and be reminded that only several more minutes of patience is required until the next segment which Allie will get to engage and enjoy. In segments that Allie enjoys, such as writing and reading, she has fun and tactile tools that keep her entertained as she learns. Good. Why are you both poking it? <laughs> G -g 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 -g. <laughs> it's ever more so engaging when her teacher creates interactive learning segments. Ride up all the rain. Oh no, uh, dry up all the way. Like fire, fire. man. Hagerty hey, is the most fast paced segment. You can watch how Hagerty is modified for Allie in my video Hagerty Lessons Modified and Simplified for Child with Special Needs. Allie is both fascinated and excited about Hagerty Lessons during class and after school hours. Hagerty can be quite boring and complicated for some students. With the modifications, it has become one of Allie's favorite segments. It's blowing. Another favorite kids have related to school is that they get to see their friends. Learning is something kids do, but in their hearts it's about socializing with friends. I see her! Yeah, your friend came back! Though limited in a virtual setting, insert the sense of socialization and experience of friendliness when possible. Narrating the classroom scene like it's a movie is one way. It also redirects attention to the class and Allie is not detached from class even during boring moments involving technical difficulties. Seeing friends can also be a reason kids transition back to class from a break. Where did he go? Maybe he went to the party, huh? He went to party. It's okay, he'll be it's back. Okay. Transitions back to class after each break can be a difficult challenge for students. Transitions have always been a major point of concern and struggle for Allie. However, throughout the entire virtual class time, Allie has no transition issues because of the following. One, she's well aware of the routine and has something to look forward to when returning to online class. Two, she's well aware of the expectations and has the confidence to meet those expectations with or without me next to her. Three, Allie thoroughly enjoys most of the two and a half hours of virtual class time. She would refuse to miss class even when she's not feeling well. She would even want to do class outside of class time. No school today. I want to, I want to go there. It's break time! 4. Breaks are only given when Allie is to have a break. Random out of routine breaks could fuel into transition issues. Other than transitions, distractions pose many problems for Allie and other students as well. During loud interruptions or when class videos have sound or static issues, <laughs> Allie knows to cover her ears, and I would turn the volume down or off. Things on the school desk and within sight can also create distractions. Allie's attention is directed at her teacher during high participation segments by having the laptop close enough to her that she cannot have anything else in front of the laptop. The teacher's screen and laptop sound are maximized to help Allie focus her attention on the teacher. Distractions disrupt focus. Students need to be able to focus in order to learn. Here are more tips to reduce distractions and increase focus. One, hair tied back reduces distractions, improves visibility, and increases focus. It's an often overlooked yet quite effective tip. Two, keep the virtual learning area or room at least distracted as possible. 
When expecting guests, have them understand to do the same. Attention to the action at the door or in the room will disrupt Ali's concentration and ability to return focus to the class. 3. Provide adequately portioned non-favorite snacks that don't dirty fingers during downtime or wait time. 4. If certain images are disturbing or disliking, place stickers on top of it to regain cooperation. 5. Have visual aids specific to lesson plans. 6. Tape the work area. 7. Create frame cutouts to narrow focus to specific instructions and tasks. Allie, do you want to do this now or do you want to do this later? Later. Okay, count how many chicks? Eight, give the option to complete tasks after class, but encourage you complete during class. This reduces pressure, stress, anxiety, and frustration when performing tasks. Over time, this leads to better performance and tasks likely to be completed during class. 9. Last but not least, Ali is instructed to achieve just one goal. Too many goals or too many instructions would be too much to keep in mind, so I remind Ali of just the one thing she only has to do for her class. That is, Allie needs to listen to the teacher. Of course, this also infers that she has to do what the teacher instructs. Instead of telling Allie tons of different things she has to do throughout her class time, I just remind Allie, if she's ready, to do what the teacher asks, and either she does it independently, or we do what the teacher wants together. Hello? Allie has been learning successfully because she experiences enjoyment and engagement. Distractions are minimized or removed, and attention is focused and maximized accordingly. Go, go. go to sleep. That's right. Sheep. Sheep. Sleep. Sleep. Rhyming words? Practice outside of class reinforces Allie's interest in learning. Sound the same at the end. We are having our student of the month presentation and you are our student of the month. One main reason for Allie's success is her teacher because it takes two to tango. Good job, Allie! Yeah, because you've been working so hard. With me on this side of the screen and her teacher on the other side of the screen collaborating to increasingly improve Allie's ability and willingness to participate and engage. Five, six, seven, eight. Even on mute with confidence. The tools are effective because they bring both joy and results to Allie. Ooh. There you go. Ooh, we're celebrating Allie's team of the month. Say good job, Allie. Thanks for watching.